my god, he's dead! The master's dead! My word, what an astounding adventure that was, eh, Frumple? Indeed, yes. Most daring enterprise. What's more, we get here only to find that the fellow that invited us is dead. A tragic turn of events. Admiral Guilfrey was a good man. Astonishing that someone would want to murder him, I simply can't credit it. Good thing you're here, eh? You'll crack this case in no time. You always do. Well, we shall see, my friend. Our first task will be to get access to Guilfrey's papers. He must have a safe of some sort. Perhaps something in there will suggest a motive for murder. Here we are then, his drawing room. I say, who on earth is that unsavoury character? We must investigate. Don't forget, I'm always here to help if you need me. I say, look at this old boy, it's Guilfrey and I during our school days. Ah, those are happy times. Not for me, I couldn't abide school. And the boys used to make fun of my name. Dumple, they'd call me. The Rosses. A curious box. Oddly, it seems fixed in place. It appears, however, that parts of the map itself might actually move slightly. Doesn't appear to do anything. Seems that the button for Russia is lodged down. I can't seem to press this button, it seems to be lodged down. I need something thin to prise it up. Poor Admiral Gilfrey. Don't worry, old friend, I will find the fiend who did this to you. Nothing to be done for the poor fellow until we drain the water, I fear. We shall have to get him out of there if I'm to do an autopsy. Can't very well determine the cause of death just by gulping at him through the glass, you know. The Admiral's orangery. There must be clues in there. Hold it right there, you lanky landlubber. The Admiral was mighty proud of his plants and I'll not be having a great lumber and oaf like you trampling all over him. That place be off limits. A salty old sea dog. Greetings, my good man. Well, spit it out. What do you want in landlubber? I say, would you mind awfully allowing me access to the orangery? No, there'll be nothing on this land that'll be making me move from this here chair. Tell me, old chap, what do you know about the victim? Tis a terrible tale, no mistake. Gilfrey was me captain for many a long voyage, but it's no business of yours. But if I may just ask you a few questions... No, I'd be saying nothing else to the likes of you. Well, shall we discuss you for a moment? Tell me, my man, what is your name? The name be Walters. Salty Walters. And don't you be forgetting it, neither. Whatever happened to your leg and eye, old fella? Yar, I be out in the ocean waves, and suddenly from the depths an almighty creature, whales they be calling him, emerges. I won't like to be saying what it did to me, but me leg be scuppered and me eye be mangled. But I don't like to be talking about it. Don't blame the fella, you're probably asking for it. What's that you be saying? Oh, nothing, old chap. Just, just clearing my throat. Tell me again about the creature that attacked you. No, it is best forgotten. Why, since that day, even the voice of one of those foul fiends is enough to chill me to be very core. Thank you. That's all for now. Well then, good day to you, sir. Yar. A relic of the Great Frog Wars. Gilfrey was most fond of ancient history. A specimen of amber, presumably found by Gilfrey. The plaque seems to have some kind of hardened slime or mucus on it, so I can't read what it says. Probably that slug of a gardener we saw earlier. Always getting that filthy mucus all over the place. Come now, Frumple, this bigotry isn't like you at all. Well, I just don't like invertebrates at all. Make my skin crawl. London, 1914. A finer amphibian you could never hope to meet, eh, Frumble? Won this in Mexico in 1911, apparently. He was a strong, fit man, even in his advancing years. He would have fought to his final breath. One of you sporting trophies myself in my youth, you know. Came second in the old boys' egg and spoon race back at the old academy. 
They let me keep the spoon. I give back the egg mind, made from her inlaid at that morning. A portrait of the great man in better times. Distinguished looking chap, eh, Winklebottom? Oh, the painting seems stuck in place. I can't shift it an inch. This is Gilfrey on his wedding day. He was utterly devoted to Ethelberta. It was so sad when she passed away. Terrible business, just terrible. Ah, look at him here, the pride of the Admiralty. They say he had the sea running through his veins. Whatever else might be running through his veins now, it worries me. A fine mahogany cupboard in the latest style, only the best for the Admiral. Looks to be a letter to his wife, written during one of his many expeditions. Lucky for her, the only letters I ever seem to get are bills. I say, old chap, it says here that he's left a note somewhere with a combination to the safe on it. It's one of those newfangled gramophone players. It's no use on its own, it needs a record. 1902 Australia, my god, from what a ghastly creature. Terrifying to think that such loathsome demons must once have crawled upon the earth. Fella probably had eight legs and great thundering claws that could tear it up in two. Gives me the willies just thinking about it. Sounds of the Sea featuring Periwinkle Flange and the Crustaceans. The Admiral's in no position to object to me borrowing this. Here's the invitation Gilfrey sent us. He promised to reveal some exciting news, but it seems events took a different turn. I've put the record on the gramophone. It's simply ghastly cacophony. Thank goodness my head is so far away from the infernal device. Gah, no, they're back! It'll all be happening again! I'll be getting out of here while I still can! What a most curious fella. Collection of numbers, how strange. A note to himself, perhaps, but what manner of code is this? Birthdays, perhaps. I'm always forgetting blessed things. We should take this with us. What's this? A handkerchief. Silly fool, must have dropped it when I ran off. I should hold on to this for safekeeping. No good, the slime is stuck fast. No amount of rubbing is going to get this off. My word, that does look frightfully tasty. Mm. Oh, mm. Oh. Oh. oh my, how awfully embarrassing. I do hope that wasn't an important clue. The marker from that terribly appetising looking plant in the orangery. It might be best to take this with me. Some water has leaked from the end of this hose. The marker from a dangerous looking plant Gilfrey discovered in America at the end of the last century. I once knew a chap who was killed after getting trapped in one of these. Sir Bumble's the second. Very nasty way to go. Another potential clue? Apparently this plant was discovered in Thailand. He certainly saw a lot of the world. We must gather all the evidence. This plant is full of a pungent chemical. It smells like rotting flesh. That's a nasty niff, all right. Tell you what though, it's some wonders for me sinuses. I haven't breathed this well in weeks. A cactus covered in dozens of needles. I'm keeping well away. Got a dreadful phobia of needles, don't you know? Doesn't that rather interfere with your work as a doctor? Not at all. Just close my eyes when I use them, that's all. It's a very common fear, you know. Most of my patients scream when they see me with one. Just going to pluck out one of these needles in case it comes in useful. I'm going to collect some of this potent chemical on the sailor's handkerchief. My word, it really does seem like strong stuff.
No, I can't scratch this malignant mucus off. It needs a solvent of some kind. There now, that did a splendid job of dissolving the slime. Cut through it in no time. A magnificent specimen found in 1908. Must be from one of his early expeditions in Africa. This should do the trick. Yes, it's come unstuck. Now we shall get to the bottom of this baffling box. Eureka! I knew Gilfrey was hiding his papers somewhere. Now to see what's really going on here. <laughs> 